Hey, what's up, everybody? It's me, Tim Keys, and I'm here to talk about the rack extension in front of me, which is Infonix RX 1200. It is their take on the infamous SP 1200 released by Emu. If you are someone who is into hip hop, urban music, and music hardware, then you already know what the significance of the SP 1200 is in terms of, you know how it colors your drums and whatnot and just the legacy that it has and shout out to infonic for you know undertaking this task of taking that information and that knowledge of the sp1200 and trying to bring it over into a, an affordable format like a rec extension like a vst so that everybody can get their hands on and use it and so i'm just going to do an overview on some of the basic features i play it with this a little bit I haven't had a whole lot of time, but I'm going to do the best I can to cover you know, the basic features and then go from there. <clears throat> so using the rack extension version, as you can see, everything is laid out in reasons, typical format, you know, like <laughs> any other hardware unit. You can hit the tab and in the back, you can do some extensive routing. So if you're someone that's into, you know, the reason workflow in particular, and you want to add this to your setup by all means i would go ahead and do so and they give you plenty of options to work with for your cv inputs now you know keep in mind you got so many presets to work with and i'm using a midi controller right now um starting on your key of c you get eight different drum hits but you got four different categories to work with. So you can either hit the bank and switch the bank up, or you can just, yeah, click the line itself. So going down to B, and then C. Pretty straightforward, and then D. Now, I want you to keep in mind that when you're using, regardless if you're using a MIDI controller or you're using the QWERTY keys, on-screen piano keys, um, every new bank is gonna start on the key of C. So just keep that in mind, and then it'll only go up you know, eight notes, and then you'll start on the next octave of C, and it'll do that for the one, two, three, four octaves so keep that in mind if you're going up too high you know it won't play beyond that that last bank and once you go past that point um from the lower octave it won't play anything lower beyond that so just some things to keep in mind you have above that you have your ability to change the tuning, the DK, and the mix for each drum. So going back to, as you can see, each bank has its own settings for each mix. And likewise for the tuning, as you can see, as I click, got some differences. And then for the decay, all that stuff can be adjusted. So going back, I'm on bank A. You're going to adjust the pitch up and down. So you get some flexibility there. I won't bore you with all the details, but you know, just keep that in mind. And then you can go back and adjust the decay. So we'll do sound A5. So you could drop the decay. And one way to let you know which a sound you're adjusting is when you change these, these parameters here, you can always look up here, sound A5. So you'll know, you know how loud you wanted the mix how much K you want it, and so forth. You go back to four. 
how loud you want it. Panning. All that stuff. And then the cool thing is you can make more adjustments here. You know what output you want, whatever said, the drum instrument you want it on. So if you want to do some additional routing, <clears throat> like separate routing to the mixer, I don't know if you can do that. I'm assuming you can because of this option here and then the ability in the back to maybe make some adjustments between here and here for your CV and then for your channel outputs here. But I have not tested that and I'm not going to in this video. I may do that at some other point in time. <clears throat> But going back, you can also change the speed of your sound, how fast you want it to play. One half, 33 RPM, 45, 1.5 times, 78 RPM, etc. So that's cool. Let's see what happens when we change that up. I'm on three, four. There we go. And then. Let's go here. Then you can change the fine tuning. Fine tuning by 100, up and down. And then you got your gain. I already said that. You do stereo, mono for your channels, left or right. So that's cool. And then you can set your filters. Low pass one, low pass two, dynamic. I could definitely hear some changes there. Not so much between, pardon me, the first one, the second one. But I could definitely hear it now in terms of it being off and on between the first two. I really can't hear too much of a difference between the the first low pass and the second low pass filter but it's cool they give you that that ability to experiment with and then the cool thing is if you're in reason you have this ability to start sampling so depending on how you have your sound card set up make sure you have that set up correctly because if not um <clears throat> this would be a little bit more difficult but if you have your you know your interface hooked up and your mic set up and whatnot. You can hit this button right here and it'll start sampling. I don't have anything connected that way. So, but you can sample directly into the machine and it definitely will give you more of that hardware, you know, feel and semi tactile experience, which is, you know, that's pretty dope. All right, I'm gonna go over a couple of the patches. I'm gonna wrap it up. We got Beat Professor. Ooh. I like that one, Be Professor. Let's do another one. There's nothing in these banks for that particular preset. So not every bank will have the same amount of samples going in them. But this thing definitely has some 
with some crunch to it. Sounds like a video game from PlayStation. Let's see. Oh, just A and B. That's all right. Let's keep going. Brooklyn. That's all right. So yeah, this definitely has some sounds to it. And the thing that makes this cool is, you know, from what I have read from people who have used it and, you know, people who supposedly have the R, not the RX, the SP1200, that this plugin is supposed to be pretty spot on compared to like the actual hardware unit. And I mean, it definitely sounds good. Let's see something real quick though. Interesting. The reason I'm trying to play the sample itself and edit it is to see if um, it just happens to be the sample itself or the samples that come with this device that um, are already pre pre processed, as opposed to you know if the hardware unit is in fact doing anything. Let's see something. see what we got going on here you could definitely hear like the reverb effect let's edit sound a8 there we go sound d1 let's edit Okay, so you know, it's doing something. I don't know how much. It sounds like the original drum was a pitch up. So it might actually be coloring the sound, which is cool. So, you know, they're not selling you snake oil. I'm going to do one more. Let's see. I got, this. I got D2. Apologize if this is boring. Okay. All right. Then let's see. Well, you know, you put your filter on. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. I, I'm not going to go through the whole lot. Everything is pretty much, you know, as you would expect. I can't compare this to the real, you know, SP-1200 because I don't have one. Maybe one day in the, the future future, once I figure out how to set up my hardware and route it, I, will, I might do a comparison between, like, how this colors the drum versus, like, an EMU, you know, ESI-32 because I do have that unit. <clears throat> or the uh, EMU 4, EMU, uh, sheesh, I think it's the Ultra 64. I don't know if I'm saying it right, but I might be able to do a, a comparison with something like that. But, you know, for 30 something bucks, these drums sound really good. And I've, I've taken way too long to go over what should have been five minutes. But yeah, man, this sounds dope.
let's do something real quick. Let's see how this holds up in an actual, you know, sound. Like in an actual, you know, music production scenario. All right, so I'm finished putting everything together. I'm going to play it for you just so you can get an idea of what this sounds like. Something real simple, real basic, but you get the idea. Um, I can see this device being used for anything, you know, from your classic hip hop to your lo-fi, your boom bap type sounds. It definitely adds, you know, a little punch to it, add a more presence and dynamic to your drums. <clears throat> Different than what you would have if you added, you know, your typical filters and distortions and whatnot. And that's because it's processing that sound in 8-bit as as opposed to like your 16, 24, or even 32-bit playback, you know, devices. So yeah, man, I would check this out. You can go check it out in the Reason Rack Extension Store and demo it for you know 30 days, see if you like it. You can also get it in a package deal with the the old, I think it's the emulation of the S900 that Akai made. So if you haven't checked that out, you can get this in a bundle with that product too, to definitely get that, you know, that old classic hip hop punch style effect, whatever you want to call it to your music. Hey man, I'm going to wrap this up. Thank you for watching this video. Peace out.